Hello, this is Cat's Diamond Painting. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've joined me here before. I'm here today to do a quick post review of this lovely little painting here and then to kit it down. I'm going to do that a little bit differently today, but I'll get on to that later. So this is Jack-O-Lantern Time from Diamond Art Club. You can tell it's Diamond Art Club because it says up there at the top and it's got their kind of tagline, do what makes you sparkle. And also it's Randall Spangler. Um, Diamond Art Club are the only company that licensed the artwork of Randall Spangler for diamond paintings. There are other places that license for cross stitch, but yeah, Randall Spangler's, their home is at Diamond Art Club and they have a lot of them on offer. So this is a very sweet little snack size painting um, and I'm calling it snack size because it is only 41 by 41 centimetres, which for me is on the small side. I know it depends a lot on what your tastes are and where you buy from and a lot of people prefer to do smaller paintings. Personally, because my style of artwork that I go for tends to be sort of detailed pieces like big landscapes or just things with a lot going on, they tend to be huge. <laughs> so it's not very often that there's a painting that I want to do that renders well in a small size. So this one was just a fun little change because if you've watched any of my recent videos, um, I had been kind of battling it out with a few whips that I had on the go that were full of confetti and I was making very slow progress <laughs> with this one. I think I kitted up on the Sunday evening and I finished on the Friday evening. So it took me five days to complete. Um, it was just a really nice, colour blocky type painting. So there's 42 colours, um, which is quite a lot for such a small space, but actually a lot of them would only feature in one area. You know, you've got big blocks of orange here that don't feature anywhere else. You've got this this yellow moon and that's only here. Um, so yeah, it that was kind of perfect for me because I like variety of colour to keep me interested, but I really wanted something that I could just get my multi-placer out and, and blitz my way through um, as a break from some of the ones that I have been working on. So this painting also features glow-in-the-dark drills. Um, the moon is glow-in-the-dark and all of the black is glow-in-the-dark. So I'm going to try and put up a picture of it glowing-in-the-dark now. So you can have a look and see what it looks like. I did struggle to charge the drills. So if you have glow in the dark drills, they don't automatically glow. You have to kind of hold a light over them. And I was struggling to get them to glow particularly brightly. So maybe that was just me being impatient. Maybe I needed to spend a bit more time over it. But it shows up quite well in the photo, kind of better than it did in real life, actually. <laughs> So I love that there is still a lot of depth of shading, despite what I was just saying about colour blocking. Um, you know, it, it's not just a block of green and the draggling of it. There's like four or five different shades of green going on. And that gives you lovely depth to the painting. And as ever, I, I love the draglings. I'm not one who generally goes for a cartoony style of uh, diamond painting or artwork, but the draglings are my exception. I've worked on quite a few of them um, and I have a few in my stash actually. If you don't know what I'm talking about, because I'm kind of talking like you do, Randall Spangler is the artist that makes this series of paintings that feature these little draglings. They're not dragons, they're not crocodiles or alligators, as I've seen people say, they are draglings. And he actually has this whole story about who they are. They come from a special land, I can't remember what it's called, and they come through to this world, um, usually to steal food, often things like cookies, because they've got a sweet tooth. Um, and you see that a lot more in other paintings, but this one is obviously in a particular style for Halloween. So... That's a lot about what I like about this painting and, you know, it did the trick. It did exactly what I wanted to give me a break from what I have been working on. There were a couple of minor gripes with this painting. Um, so Diamond Art Club, about a year and a bit ago, started transitioning from their old diamonds, their drills, to a newer form of drills. And with rounds, the difference was quite stark. So their old rounds had quite a, a very sparkly, but kind of almost flat effect on top, because they actually had so many facets that it kind of made them rounded. And they changed to drills that I, I think, if I've understood correctly, have 
fewer facets so they're maybe more shimmery than sparkly although still plenty sparkly um and it's quite a difference when you look at the drills now when they were transitioning from one kind of drill to the other they were phasing them in and out um you know i'm using the word transition advisory um you would you would get a kit that would have mostly old drills and some new drills and then you'd get a mixture and then eventually you'd get through to all new drills and they phased out the old drills this painting i bought on a d stash site in about february so whoever had bought it i don't know when they bought it but i'm guessing they bought it you know last halloween time when it was fairly early on in the transition so there is a real mixture of the two kinds of drills in this painting for me, the difference in the drills is quite obvious when you look at the painting. You may not be able to see it in the viewfinder and I will try and, you know, move a bit closer in in a, in a moment. Um, but when I was working with them, it was really noticeable because the older drills kind of, they don't, they don't quite grip to your pen as well. I think because they're smoother, you need a bit more wax in your pen for them to grip. Um, the newer drills I prefer to work with but also there were some quality issues on both kinds of drills, more so the older drills. Um, I've got here my trash pot, which I think is quite a lot for a painting of this size. Um, so with the newer kind of drills, oh, there's a cat hair. There's <laughs> always a cat hair in my house. Um, with the newer drills, you had the standard issues of like uh, concave backs and little holes in them and sometimes little tabs. With the older drills, I was finding that an awful lot of them had um, like a flat bit at the side. Let me see if I can shake some out in a tray and show you what I mean. Basically, with the older drills, a lot of them weren't a perfect circle. They had like a flat side. And that I found really irritating because sometimes then you could see the guide circles on the canvas underneath. Anyway, you can see here, there's quite a few drills that just weren't up to Diamond Art Club's normal standard. And I think some of that was just, um, certainly with the newer drills, I know that there were some production problems in the early months. There was a while in the spring that they stopped doing round paintings because of quality control. With the older drills, I mean, I'd had that with other paintings as well. I think it was a common issue. Um, if you were to buy this painting now, it has sold out and been restocked since then. So you would get a newer kit with newer drills. And I doubt that you would have the same problem again. And um, so it's not really, you know, a, a criticism to, to worry about with Diamond Art Club going forwards. If you were buying paintings around this time, sort of autumn last year, you may find you encounter similar issues. I'm going to see if I can show you a little bit up closer what I mean about the effect of the two kinds of drills in the painting. A lot of people wouldn't even notice it. From a distance, you can't tell. So it's really, really me being finicky. If it was a huge quality control problem, I don't think Diamond Art Club would have sold paintings with that mixture of drills. For me, because I'm fussy, I just... I notice it. So I'm going to show you that now and then I'm going to move on to kitting down. Okay, please excuse me if you can see lots of little hairs on the painting. It's a common problem with round paintings because you have um, the kind of exposed sticky backing of the canvas in between the drills and it's a particular problem here because I have a very floofy cat who likes to molt everywhere. So I'm not sure how well you can see, but in these sections, we had a mixture of drills and it was just not my preferred set, I guess. Um, this purple section up here, I did think I was going to run out of drills because there were so many that weren't very good in all those purple colours. They were mainly old drills. Whereas down here, it's mostly new drills and it was a lot better. Right, here are my leftover drills. 
you can see here that I have colours left over in all of them, even though I did feel concerned I was going to run out of a few. This is the kind of reason why I keep most of my spare drills, because I bought this kit on a D-Stash site, as I've mentioned, so I have no warranty for it. And if I were to run out of colours, I would not be able to get them from Diamond Art Club. So my spare drill stash is my kind of insurance against that. However, that being said, because the drill quality in this canvas, in this kit even, really was below the normal standard, I've decided I'm only going to keep the colour drills that I don't already have in my spare drill stash. The rest of them I'm going to chuck away in my sort of junk drill pot. This is where I normally put the trash drills from each kit. So I have prepared some little baggies for the colours that I don't already have and I'm going to quickly go through and do those now. And then I'm going to try something a little bit different for the last few drills, which is a kind of ASM, what's the word? ASMR. So I'm just going to quit talking after I've done these few baggies and we're just going to zero in on the satisfying sounds of unkitting. Um, well, that's what I hope will happen anyway. Hey, it's an experiment. <laughs> if you don't like it, I apologise, but we'll, we'll give it a go and see what happens. Anyway, I've only got about 14 colours or so that I'm keeping. And then the rest will go in that satisfying jam jar of mixed up drills. I also, if you've noticed, separate out the old style drills and the new style drills in my spare drill stash because it just, you know, if I'm working on a kit and it's got new drills, I would prefer to find new drills to go in if I've got spares of both um, because they look quite different, as I've said. It also just helps me when I want to find drills if I have separated them out more, you know, rather than just having one big bag of all the spare drills that I've ever had from any kits ever, which would be very hard to actually find the one that I wanted. So, how are you doing? It's Wednesday morning here, midway through the week. I've not got a lot on. I have to take our car in for its MOT later, um, which is just, you know, the annual service check to make sure that it's still roadworthy and then I largely just plan to diamond paint today <laughs> I've got washing to do dinner tonight is a sausage casserole there's a recipe that I've used quite a bit over the years um, I'll describe it and then if you like the sound of it you can just google BBC good food hairy bikers sausage casserole because of these chefs called the hairy bikers that used to have a cooking show um <laughs> it's a weird name isn't it they were two very beardy men who like to drive motorcycles but also like to cook <laughs> and they had this cooking show anyway it's um so obviously sausages <laughs> and there's streaky bacon and smoked paprika for a nice smoky flavor and there's butter beans, there's chopped tomatoes, there's some herbs, like I think thyme, there's stock and or wine. I tend to leave the wine out. Um, yeah, that's, that's the main components, I think. And it's really nice, hearty sausage casserole. I love the smoky flavours. I'm an absolute sucker for smoked paprika in a cooking. Um, so we'll have that with some crusty bread and some green beans on the side. I think that will be dinner tonight. My husband is a vegetarian, so we'll have two pots on the go. One, the one I've just described, and then I've got for him some nice quality vegetarian sausages that uh, do a bit of a better job of like mimicking the normal herbs and seasonings of sausages. So he particularly likes those. 
and I can't put bacon in for him now. You can buy vegetarian bacon, um, but he's never been that keen to try those. I'm not sure why. I think he just feels like he can easily do without it. And they never look that good. <laughs> they never look like they'd be a particularly good imitation. But what I will do for him, because the bacon's really just in there for smokiness, so I'll probably do a bit extra smoked paprika, but there's also um, a thing you can buy called liquid smoke, which is, I think it's vegan even, just a little smoky seasoning that you can add to food. So I'll put some of that in as well. And then he's not really missing anything that we've got flavour-wise. Oh. The other thing that I've been doing a lot at the moment is binge watching TV series. <laughs> Particularly while I've been diamond painting. Do you do that? I either listen to an audio book or I have my iPad to the side of me and I'm watching a TV series. Usually one that I haven't that I have watched before, so I don't need to concentrate quite so much. So at the moment, I'm working my way through House. Do you remember that? It was from sort of the early two thousands, I believe. It had um, Hugh Laurie, who's a great actor. Um, oh, this one's still got lots of static in it, and it had Jess or Jesse Spencer, who used to be on Neighbours, which is another TV programme I watch. And I'm also working my way through that because Neighbours was this soap opera that I watched from when I was seven. Um, and it just got cancelled this summer. The last sort of few years, I've tended to have it recorded on the box. And then I catch up on it every now and again, but I don't really watch it religiously on a day-to-day -day basis. But I still always catch up. So I was rather gutted when they cancelled it. But I'm catching up on what I had recorded from earlier this year. So <laughs> don't tell me if <laughs> you know how it ends. Because I don't know how they kind of wrapped it up. Knowing that it was finishing after all that time. It was really sad. <laughs> okay. So... And that is all the drills that I don't already have in my spare drill storage. I'm going to put those away and then I'm going to get on with the rest of it. So this is the last I'm going to talk in the video because if I can pull this off, this next section will just be peace and quiet and the sounds of kitting down. Um, it shouldn't take too long. If you don't see anything after this point, it's because I tried it and it really didn't work. <laughs> In which case, I'll see you next time. But if it does work, I hope you enjoy. Let me know if you do or don't enjoy this kind of thing, because it's something that I, I can do again if you do. So thanks for joining me today, and I will see you again soon. Bye!